POC Network here with another unboxing, this time coming from the company Geekcom. And this is the Mini Air 11 Mini PC. It is a release that has inside an 11th gen Intel Celeron processor. It is the N5095 processor, which is a 2.9 gigahertz. Make sure you get that right. 2.9 gigahertz processor. It's a quad core and uh, eight gigabytes of memory of DDR4 memory. And I believe it's upgradable. I think it should be upgradable probably to like 16, 32 gigs, probably 16. I would say most of them of the mini PCs are around 16 gigs uh, in terms of what you can upgrade to if the the if the RAM inside is not embedded, of course, and we'll take a look at that in just a second. But it does come again with eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory inside out of the box. There is also a 256 gigabyte SSD. It is an M.2 form factor, so it's going to be a small little card size, kind of similar to a stick of memory. But it's a small hard drive that's incredibly fast, although it is serial ATA, which is something to point out. It does support PCI Express and serial ATA, I believe, but I think the drive that comes with it is serial ATA, so it's not going to be as fast as NVMe but it is something to get you started. It is SSD, there are no spinning hard drives in this, and it's a small, tiny little form factor of M.2. It offers dual band Wi-Fi, as well as Bluetooth 4.2 for wireless devices. So you can, uh, right out of the box, it supports wireless mice and keyboards and game controllers, although again, you're not gonna wanna really game on this. It's not for gaming. Uh, again, this is more of just a desktop or a workstation kind of scenario. And when I say that, I'm talking like workplace, you know, something that you know, just a workstation you're gonna be logging onto, uh, checking email, browsing the internet, uh, answering tickets online, or using Microsoft Office, or any normal kind of basic workstation application. You're not gonna do any kind of graphic, in uh, graphic intense operations like gaming. Uh, or working with AutoCAD or Premiere Pro or anything like that. Again, you're, what you're paying for here is a powerful system for its size and its versatility to be able to do multiple different things, as well as say digital signage, put this on the back of a TV during an expo or convention and have 4K graphics running across a nice big video wall or, or TV screen and or a demo station for demonstrating so new software that your company has to offer, anything like that. Uh, all sorts of different applications, all while keeping it with a small footprint. And all of that with Windows 11 loaded on the actual drive, which is Windows 11 Pro. And it does support, of course, Linux, if you wanna change it over to Linux and use something else or Chrome OS, all for an MSRP of $279, which does put it in a pretty decent place. $279 seems pretty, average, I would say, for the performance that you're gonna be getting out of this computer. So it does seem that the price meets what you buy or what you're getting. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna open this up. We're gonna see what it looks like, what it comes with, and we're gonna take it apart and see what it looks like on the inside as well to see what's upgradable. Because the drive, for example, is upgradable up to, they say one terabyte, but I'm sure you can put a two terabyte drive in there just fine. But uh, one terabyte is probably gonna be like your average use case scenario for something this small, unless you're using it for a media server. So let's go ahead and open that up and see what this looks like. So the size of the system is pretty small. It's a little bit small, smaller than your, your typical mini PC, we'll say from companies like Geekcom or B-Link or any of these other brands that typically offer uh, multiple different types of mini PC models out there. Uh, this is similar square uh, size factor, form factor of the, the PC, but thinner. So we're looking at about probably two thirds the size of your typical mini PC from top to bottom, which is pretty good. We'll go ahead and open this up. So the top of the mini PC has a nice glossy, shiny finish to it. Uh, everything else kind of has uh, kind of a, it's just, can't tell if it's aluminum or plastic. It looks like it's aluminum running around it maybe. Maybe some little combination of plastic and aluminum. On the side here, you can see two grills for airflow, plus you have your vent in the back where it's pulling all that air in. And then on the bottom, you have four rubber feet. So that just helps keep it in one place. And then uh, on the sides, uh, let's see, looking at it from the front at least, it's left side, you're gonna have a just a SD card reader right here, which is just for transferring files to and from other devices with. And then you have on its right side over here, you have a Kensing lock, security lock connection here, just in case you need to tie this down, say it's on the back of a TV at an expo or a demo station somewhere, so you don't want anybody walking away from it, or with it at least, uh, you can put a security lock on here. 
And then across the front, you have a USB Type-C connection here. This is for data only, not charging. You have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 input right here. You have a headset connection, which is a 3.5 millimeter uh, headset connection for headphones, microphone, or full headset. You have a power button here that is simple, just press to turn it on. Uh, you have on the back a AC connection here. This is for plugging it into the wall, obviously. You have a mini display port connection. You have one gigabit ethernet connection right here in the back. You have two more USB 3.2 Gen 2 connections. You have another USB type C connection, which again, it's for data only, it's not for charging. And then an HDMI port. Now the HDMI port is only 1.4. So when I say 4K, I guess that's definitely 4K with limitations. So it does put out 4K, but since it is HDMI 1.4, your 4K is gonna be limited to 30 frames per second or 30 Hertz. And uh, you're not gonna get the full 60 or higher out of that. So that's the only disadvantage. But again, you're not really buying this for any kind of hardcore gaming or anything. This is just gonna be for a workstation, a small media server, digital display, family PC for general, just tasks. Nothing intensive. So yeah, it kind of makes sense to have a 1.4. Kind of a surprise by that though, because just about everybody's been putting 2.0 on there now uh, on a lot of these mini PCs, but 1.4 it is on this model. So going further into the box to see what kind of accessories we have, we have a little card here and it just says, thank you for purchasing. And if you have any information or questions or anything else, uh, reach out to them. You have a small carrying bag here, just a felt drawstring bag in case you do want to go mobile with this. Now remember, it's not a mobile computer per se. It is meant to be kind of static attached to something. Uh, it's, it does need to be plugged into the wall in order to operate. There's no batteries or anything. However, there is the sense of mobility when it comes to using it for commercial purposes like digital signage, demos, and things like that. Because at the end of the day, or the end of the event, you're going to have to pack it up and move it to the next location. So you have something to protect it with. You have a two-part AC system here just for plugging it into the wall. And of course it will have a brick on it, just like any mini, mini PC will. You do have a HDMI cable here. That's obviously gonna be rated for 1.4. And then this is a, a clever add-on here. Uh, they have a, uh, not everybody has mini display port for their monitor or anything else. Uh, sometimes everything's just, just, gonna, just gonna be HDMI now. Uh, well, in the case uh, of where you're gonna have just HDMI to play with. They do provide you with a mini display port to HDMI connection or adapter at least here. So that way you can make use of that mini display port for a second screen. You have an instructional right here that just shows you how to take it apart, how to make use of it, how to mount it, how to plug it into the wall in case you need that kind of instruction. All of that's right here in this fold out. Then you have the last thing that's in here. You have the Visa mount adapter here. That's for connecting this to the back of a TV with or monitor, and as long as that TV or monitor has Visa mount holes on the back. So that way you don't need to worry about Velcro or anything or in it sitting it directly on the surface. It can just hide behind the TV or a monitor and out of sight, out of mind. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up and take a look and see what it looks like on the inside and determine if, uh, or not just if, but what exactly can be upgraded as well as just what it looks like. In order to be able to open this up, you just have to unscrew the feet off. There's gonna be four feet, which also act as screws. And it looks like they don't come all the way out, so they do have a, uh, some kind of a, a piece in the back that's keeping them attached to these, the, this base plate on the bottom. So all you have to do is just make sure they're all loosened, which is a good thing because you, know, you don't accidentally lose your screws while you're trying to open this up. Once you have them all loose, just uh, you're gonna see a little diagram right here. This sort of shows an arrow that just points to the front of the PC. This is front. Uh, it just means that it's where the front is so you know your orientation when you go to put this back on, but just grab it from the back two legs and pull up and the whole thing should just pop right out. And this is the what the bottom portion looks like, at least the inside of the bottom portion. And now you have the inside of the mini PC. So as I assumed, the memory is upgradable and it is modular, it is not embedded onto the mini PC. And it is just a regular SODIMM chip here. Uh, that's DDR4, it is the brand, it is Wooposit. W-O-O-P-O-S-I-T, or is it Wadposit? Maybe it's Wadposit, Wooposit, Wadposit, whatever it is. Uh, I 
can honestly say I haven't heard of that one. It is a Chinese brand, uh, eight gigabytes, again, DDR4. And if you wanna upgrade this to, which I'm guessing the max is gonna be 16 gigabytes, uh, just make sure you get the same uh, type of DDR4. You don't have to get the same brand. If you don't like this brand, you can swap it out with a Kensington or something and just do two eight gigabyte sticks. And then for the hard drive, again, it is a M.2 style or form factor here. So it, it's very similar to a stick of memory, one of these smaller sodium uh, sticks. You just unscrew it here. This pops up, pulls outwards like this, and you can upgrade that to, to or 512, one terabyte, and probably two terabytes as well, I'm sure, or maybe even higher if for some reason you need more capacity. But again, the manufacturer rates this as up to one terabyte. Now there are no adapters that are in addition to the M.2 hard drive. So there's no other capacity or, or storage capacity that you can add to this outside of the SD card slot on the side, which we wouldn't advise. That would be really, really, really slow. And you wouldn't want that. This is just for transferring data back and forth between this and another device like your phone or a tablet or, or a, a camera. So really, when it comes to expansion on some of these mini PCs, some of them offer a little ribbon uh, with, a, with some kind of a connection that adapts outwards to a full-size 2.5, or at least for mobile devices, a full-size 2.5 inch hard drive that can go in here. But uh, in this case, it does not have one of those. Uh, it, so that's probably a lot to do with its small form factor because it doesn't have that extra space. That extra space is usually where you're gonna get that extra hard drive. So this is definitely not gonna be for a system you want tons and tons of capacity in. This is gonna be for a simple workstation. Again, simple solution to mid-range, not even mid-range probably, because uh, at that point you're going with laptop or full desktop or a incredibly powerful mini PC and you're gonna be spending closer to 500. In this case, it doesn't have any of that. So it's only $279 except for the fact that it isn't right now. You, it's actually on sale at this moment for $239, plus you can get an additional $20 off. And of course, this is just from the manufacturer's website if you go to Geekcom's website, and we'll have a link as well. You could use a discount code that is called SUMMERAIR11, and that's all one word, lowercase. Summer, like the season, air, as in what you breathe, and 11, all is one word. That is your discount code for an additional $20 on top of the current promo that brings it down to $239 already. Making this $219 grand total uh, with all of your discounts, which is pretty decent for a mini PC of its small profile size and capabilities. So it's looking pretty good. And of course, we don't really know much more than that until we actually take out the time to sit down with this and test it out and see what, you know, what it's capable of once we put it through its paces. And it does not come with the screwdriver in case that question comes out, that is ours. It does not come with that. So to open this, you gotta get your own screwdriver. But there you have it for, screwdriver doesn't wanna sit still. We'll just get rid of that. So there you have it. This is the Mini Air 11 Geekom Mini PC from, well, Geekom. And uh, we're gonna have links in the description on where you can find this. Of course, we'll also have a review at plcnetwork.net. We'll have a link for that in the description as well. Once it becomes available, you'll have to give us a few days to actually sit down with this and put it through its trials. But that review will pop up in the description come time. And then we'll let you know what we think about it completely in terms of how well it performs. So again, that's pocnetwork.net. If you'd like to be seen here, don't forget to subscribe below, hit that button and follow us. And uh, definitely like the video and use the comment section to share any of your thoughts, comments, suggestions, questions, or anything else that might be crossing your mind. Uh, maybe you have something similar to this, or maybe you have this specific model, although I don't think a lot of people have their hands on this model just yet. So it's probably more something similar and you have some questions or comparisons you want to discuss between each other or even with us. Definitely use those comments. And as always, we thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time. If you want to stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover, remember to subscribe right here. Subscription button. Click it. You're going to want to. There's lots of videos, interviews, previews, all sorts of stuff. Button. Click it.